from the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia. Now at 8, I-95 remains a challenge for drivers. Headed southbound this morning, an update on the massive road project that has the highway shut down for the day. If you haven't stepped outside just yet, you need to put a coat on. It's a chilly start, but Tammy Sousa is tracking what's next for your week. Today is Sunday, February 25th. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jan Carabello. And I'm Howard Monroe. Let's get right on over to meteorologist Tammy Sousa, by the way, with a look at your next for the forecast. Hey, Tim. Morning, well, Tim. good morning. Yeah, a cold one this morning. It stepped out. Coldest day that we've seen so far this February. Uh, we were in the low 20s in Philadelphia, teens in some of the outlying areas with a nasty wind chill in the teens. Let's take a look at what's going on right now across the city. First of all, let's take a look at uh, I-95. Clear skies. If you're out driving, we have light winds and and it is a beautiful day, albeit a very cold one. You can see the steam coming off of uh, some of the area buildings. Uh, let's take a look at those numbers, though. 26 right now. We're up to 26 in Philadelphia, 14 in the Poconos, 27 in Millville. If you're in Reading, you're at 24. We go down the shore, you're just as cold. You're not getting the benefit of that ocean water. 25 in Atlantic City. And then we factor in those light winds, and it feels like 16 right now in Atlantic City. Feels like 18 in Philadelphia, and only 6 in the Poconos. You were, had a wind chill below zero this morning earlier, so at least you're making it in the right direction. Uh, we do have clear skies across the area. Our next weather maker is way, 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 way out west. In fact, you have to go out here to the Pacific Northwest to see it. It's a storm system that's going to dive in, take shape, and then head our way by the time that we get into later in the day on Tuesday. So for today, enjoy the slow climb through the 30s. I think we'll be about 39 by 1 o'clock this afternoon, and we'll finally get into those mid-40s sometime between 3 and 5. I think that our target temperature today will be right around 4 o'clock at 45 degrees with plenty of sunshine. When I come back in just a few minutes, we'll talk about a huge warm up to the 60s this week. We'll talk about your next chance of rain and maybe even a little thunder. Guys? All right, thank you, Tammy. A next traffic alert continues. For a second time this month, I 95 remains closed because of a major construction project. All southbound lanes are closed until 5 a.m. tomorrow. The closure is between the exit for 676 and the Moore Street on ramp. Crews are demolishing the cap covering the southbound lanes. Penda and the city will replace the cap with a 12-acre park extending over the highway. The project is expected to take about five years and cost about $329 million. I think it's really going to be great once it's finished. But boy, it's a big project. <laughs> Providing an option for people in the city to have some green space extending towards the river is really a wonderful thing. The process of it right now is a little arduous. It took them a long time to figure out to get the funding to make this happen. And it's, I guess, going to take a while, but it'll be cool. One northbound lane is also closed while the demolition takes place. 95 is scheduled to fully reopen tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock. CBS News Philadelphia is in your corner helping you navigate the I-95 closure. We have all the detours and details on the highways reopening on our website, cbsphiladelphia.com. A heads up now for SEPTA riders, new spring bus and metro schedules go into effect today and tomorrow. Some of them involve bus lines affected by that CAP project. SEPTA says the changes will also improve reliability. And the changes will align the schedules with current staffing and ridership patterns. Meantime, Penta crews will be repairing potholes on 40 state highways this week. You can expect delays on I-95, Roosevelt Boulevard, 202 and 422. Drivers are being asked to slow down in work zones and refrain from distracted driving to keep themselves and those workers safe. For a full list of locations, you can go to our website, cbsphiladelphia.com. Happening today, a memorial for the five victims killed after a shooting and fire in East Lansdowne earlier this month. The Lee Family Celebration of Life Service will be held from 1 until 3 o'clock this afternoon in the Penwood High School Gymnasium. 40-year-old Sue Lee, his wife, 37-year-old Brittany McLaughlin Lee, and their children, 10-year-old Xavier, 17-year-old Natalia, and 13-year-old Michaela, all died on February 7th. Prosecutors say Conley shot and killed his family members, set the house on fire, and then killed himself. There's another meeting planned for tomorrow to discuss the possibility of dissolving the Jenkintown Police Department. This all because of 
budget concerns. Jenkintown's Borough Hall was packed to capacity on Wednesday night. The plan calls for getting rid of the Jenkintown Police Department and outsourcing that work to nearby Abington Township. Leaders cited a $600,000 budget shortfall as the reason. CBS News Philadelphia is staying with this story and will follow this meeting when it happens. Thousands of gymnasts are in Center City for a big fundraiser. Dozens of teams from across the country are taking part in the Unite for Her Pink Invitational. It wraps up today. All proceeds from this weekend's event benefit the nonprofit Unite for Her. The money helps to provide free therapies for cancer patients that would otherwise be out of pocket. For Tiffany Clifton Reed, who was diagnosed in 2020, Unite for Her helped provide emotional support for her and her husband. All of the services that they provide and just checking on me and seeing how I'm doing, seeing how we are doing. Clifton Reed now volunteers at the event where gymnasts not only compete, but have the opportunity to learn about breast health and early detection in an age appropriate way. The Pink Invitational has raised more than $5 million over the last 15 years. Nikki Haley says she will stay in the race for the GOP presidential nomination. This after former President Donald Trump secured another primary win in Haley's home state of South Carolina. CBS News correspondent Bradley Blackburn joins us live now with more on the vote. Bradley, good morning. Howard Jan, good morning. According to CBS News projections, former President Trump took South Carolina with 60% of the vote. That's some 20 points higher than Nikki Haley. He's now notched four wins on the road to the GOP nomination, and a rematch with President Joe Biden seems all but inevitable. This was a little sooner than we anticipated. In South Carolina Saturday, former President Trump celebrated another victory. An even bigger win than we anticipated. And Despite losing her home state and with an unclear path, Nikki Haley promised to push forward. I'm a woman of my word. Yeah! Roughly 800,000 South Carolinians took to the polls Saturday. Donald's going to carry it. And I'm just adding to the pile. Weighing the choice between a former president and the state's former governor. I had to come have one more vote against Trump. I had to hold my nose to be to vote, to be honest. Trump leads in the delegate count and polls show he's the overwhelming pick for primary voters nationwide. But this is a race unlike any other, as he simultaneously faces multiple legal challenges. It's one reason Haley is holding on. Yesterday, she seized on comments Trump made in front of conservative black voters. My, the mugshot, we've all seen the mugshot. And you know who embraced it more than anybody else? The black population. It's incredible. That's the chaos that comes with Donald Trump. That's the offensiveness that's going to happen every day between now and the general election, which is why I continue to say Donald Trump cannot win a general election. Haley heads to Michigan for the next contest on Tuesday. Sixteen delegates are at stake in Michigan, and then Super Tuesday follows a week later. More than 800 delegates are up for grabs that day. It is all about the numbers. Trump needs 1,215 to win, and with South Carolina, Howard and Jan, he's secured 107. On the road. There we go. Thanks, Bradley Blackburn, reporting live from New York. Appreciate it. Thank you, Bradley. CBS Philadelphia is proudly celebrating Black History Month, and we are featuring local black artists and business owners this morning on our show. Our Ross Dumitay is joining us live now from Trunk in North Northern Liberties, creating handmade gifts that are also good for the environment. Ross, good morning. Good morning, guys. Yeah, welcome to Trunk, this great lifestyle shop right in the heart of Northern Liberties. What a selection they have. And you guys really touched on it. Really, uh, at the heart of this black owned business is sustainability, handmade goods. It's often you see one of those two, but not both. So, here to talk about it more is uh, the owner, Dorothea Gamble, over here. And uh, we also have this great arrangement of um, locally made goods. I know you're going to talk more about that in a second. But first, sustainable and handmade. Like I mentioned, it's not often you find items that fit both of those categories. Why is it so important that it, your items fit both of those categories? And how difficult is it to find things that fit those categories? Well, actually, for my partner, Dagmar Mitchell, and I, it's actually very, very difficult. It's challenging, plus I have a high standard of how it should be packaged and made, but it's still out there. There's quite a few talented people in Philadelphia. You would not believe, but 
fortunately for us, they come to us. So we don't actually have to search for them. Since we opened in 2018, people that come, they come again and ask how they can get into the shop. So, And we do some um, trade show. Basically, people come in and seek us out. Well, that makes it a little bit easier. And just yeah, judging by the selection here, you haven't had too much trouble. But I do find it impressive that not only are a lot of these items handmade, sustainable, but they're also locally made, too. And that's what you've lined up here for us. So do you have a couple favorites, as uh, our photographer Kyle here shows off some of them, that you might be able to highlight for us and talk a little more about? Yes. Um, I particularly like Thank You here. She does local ceramics here. And I absolutely love this young guy here. He took a wood burning, a wood cutting class, and became a wood maker. He actually makes wood furniture now. These are all solid woods. And then I love this local designer. Um, him and his fiance designed these hats, hand painted uh, Birkenstocks because he's actually an artist on canvas. And his girlfriend, fiance, excuse me, designs these bags. These, but everything that's in here, I absolutely love. And we concentrate a lot on upcycledness. That's why we are sustainable. That's great. And, and, you know, we talk about designer stuff all the time. Designers in the eyes of the beholder, right? Like everyone's a designer uh, in terms of local artists as well. My final question for you is, you know, I read on your website that diversity is also super important. Representation is so important. Obviously, you guys are a black owned business, but why is it so important to also showcase diverse uh, artists and, and diverse uh, designers like you mentioned? Because that's a difficult platform for uh, local people of color, people of color in general to get their product out there. And when we opened, we, did, we were really just going to be a gift shop and then we decided to use our walls wall for art. But it's so important that these young or uh, experienced artists have a platform so that other people can see their product and put it in their home, hang it on their wall, use it, whatever they're going to do. That's why it's so important to us. And Dorothy, I think it's wonderful how you're displaying that right in the heart of Northern Liberties. Not an easy place to get a storefront as well. So kudos to you and thank you so much for the time this morning. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, Trunk, you got to come and check it out right on 2nd Street in Northern Liberties, guys. We've had a lot of fun showing off a lot of black-owned businesses this morning. We should do this more often. I'll send it back to you in the studio. We've got our eyes on a couple things out there, Ross. We sure did that backpack uh, that was uh, that she just highlighted. But also, we can see <laughs> there like the backpack. Yeah, yeah the send backpack. me the shopping list, guys, and I'll see what I can do and bring back. And we can see behind you guys there are the two plaques, and they were the best of Philly. I believe, I believe it says 2021 and 2023. Uh, so Dorothea and Trunk doing great business up there in Northern Liberties. Yeah, congrats to them. Yeah. Thanks, Ross. All right, thank you, Ross. And CBS News Philadelphia has continuing coverage throughout Black History Month. You can watch all of our stories at cbsphiladelphia.com. Coming up next, Whit Mary Field takes the field in spring training. Highlights from the Phillies in Florida are coming up. And making medical services easy to understand for people who may not understand English. You'll meet one man dedicated to helping others.